All right, hey everyone. Um, back with a new Safari video. So uh, this Safari, ever since I got it, has never had a windshield washer pump work or the uh, rear windshield washer or the headlight washers. Um, so I decided to take a, a dive into that and uh, I'm gonna walk you through how to diagnose what the issue is, whether it's uh, like a line or a pump or what. Um, and I'm also going to fix it. So, uh, without further ado, we'll dive in. The first thing I did is, uh, put the key in and when we've got it turned to on, uh, to run my windshield washers, I pull the stock back here and pull the, uh, the left stock in this case. And you'll see when I run it, my windshield, uh, wipers are going to run. So look at that, you know? That tells me, first of all, that my switch right here isn't bad. So it knows, great, you do want to uh, run the windshield or run the windshield washers. So good news, one thing's uh, uh, good, one less thing to diagnose. So then I need to figure out, great, do I have a pump problem or do I have a line that is, uh, like, am I just, you know, blowing uh, windshield washer fluid out on the ground? Um, and, you know, through movie magic, months ago, I already took these pumps out, so uh, I can tell you it is the pump. But what, the, what things would you look for? So here's, you know, the pump, and it sits kind of down in here. I've already got it out uh, for sake of replacing it. But since this is already out of the way, I'll just take it out of the way. The way that you would look for issues to say, is it a line? is really just backward trace where those lines go. So here under the bottom of the hood, you see these lines right here, well, those are cables or hoses. Let's look. These are the hoses. So this hose here comes around. And generally speaking, as I follow it down with my hand, just kind of seems to be right. I don't see any issues there. So that wasn't my initial guess. Um, and by looking at how often I see these windshield washer pumps available for sale online, I figured the pumps themselves were broken. I've got my reservoir taken out. So uh, here you can see these holes on the bottom. That's where my, uh, where my pumps go. Um, and you're saying pumps, that seems a little excessive. And uh, you know what, you're right. Um, having two pumps on here, one for the windshield washers and one for the uh, uh, headlight washers seems excessive. Um, what's even more excessive is that there's actually another reservoir and another pump for the rear windshield washer. So um, thank you, Nissan. That is a, a interesting design choice. Um, but in any case, we just need to, uh, to diagnose what the issue is on these. So I've got this uh, reservoir out of the way. And down here, you can see I've got a couple of pumps, and you're probably asking yourself, like, geez, you just left the pumps hanging around in there? And uh, I did because I diagnosed that they were broken, so I don't care. It's a lot easier to find my wiring loom and hoses and everything when everything's hooked up than it is to leave those sitting out, and then I have to go chase down and find where does this hose come from and uh, uh, where does this wiring loom go to. So, um, so we've roughly established anyway that uh, it's probably not just a hose being bad. Uh, they look like they come straight out of the uh, back of the hood, back through here, and this all looks like generally pretty healthy rubber. Um, I didn't trace it all the way back through, but um, here you can see my hand and it kind of comes back through down here. So sure looks like we've got uh, uh, looks like we've got good hoses. So now the next thing we're going to check is are these getting voltage so you know i i want to see you know when i flip the switch do 12 volts make their way all the way down here to this pump and if so that tells me that well this pump is getting all the signal it needs um and probably the pump is faulty if it's not making any noises so uh, i'm going to pause the camera get my multimeter set up and we'll talk about that Okay, so here you can see the uh, pump itself, and what I'm going to do is get it, the wiring harness on it disconnected. Let me see if I can move this camera down just a little more so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. So, try and keep my hands out of the way. Uh, but there's just this little clasp right here. I'm just going to press on that, kind of pull the pump away, and my 
connection came right out. So I'll just set that aside. I don't need that. And then I'm going to use a multimeter to test this. So this is uh, a Harbor Freight special, I think, like a super cheap multimeter. Um, nice multimeters are out there, and nice multimeters are nice. Um, this cheap multimeter works just fine. And uh, if you're saying, ah, oh, geez, I didn't realize this project is going to require special tools, and uh, I don't know that I want to do that, just go buy yourself a cheap multimeter. Uh, Ten dollars, and you can. It really unlocks the opportunities for the things that you can diagnose and repair yourself. So, um, my multimeter has two prongs on it. I've got a, a positive and a negative, a red and a black. Um, in my case, I don't really care which way it's going, and so I just need to check: Am I getting twelve volts? It could be positive twelve volts or negative twelve volts, depending on which way I put these into the prongs, or which uh, which one of these is ground, which one of these is power. Um, but I don't really care. I'm just looking to see, does it get 12 or negative 12? So I'm just shoving those prongs in there. Let that sit. And then here, I'm going to set up my multimeter. And ideally, you've got a friend to help you with this or something. You're not doing this all by yourself. Um, you're also not trying to video it while you're doing it by yourself. But um, what I'm looking for here is... Uh, DC voltage, so that's my, my dot as opposed to my wave, and it should be on the scale of, you know, 0 to 100, so my 20 figure there is what I'm looking at. So, turn this over to 20, and I've got 0, which makes sense, because I'm not hitting the switch right now. So, everything looks good. So, now I'm going to move this over just kind of on top of the hood, or close to the top of the hood, so that I can see this from the cab. All right. So right here, standing next to the uh, next to the truck, I can access the switch and I can see my voltage there. So now I'm going to turn the key back on, and I'm going to hit the switch again. Oh, I've got something on there, 0.8. Okay, so I've got like a resting voltage, but let's see if I pull the switch. Uh, there, I got 12 volts. So um, I am getting all the voltage that I need at those pumps. That pump just isn't doing a dang thing when I give it power. So, um, like I said, that's what I suspected. Um, I also have seen these pumps available for sale online at uh, a lot of retailers. It tells me that uh, this is a common problem. So, let's replace that one pump, and then uh, we'll see if we hear it make a noise, and, and we'll move forward. Okay, I've got my new pump here. This is a Auto Nova pump. I don't know. I'm not... Uh, not sponsored by them, so I don't really care. Um, but just a uh, standard replacement for the pump that I just took out. So let's compare them kind of side by side before I get too excited. Um, I'll show you where I left off with the other one. It just still had the hose on it, so let's get that off. Might require a little more elbow grease than I thought. There we go. Kind of barbed on there, so that way it doesn't leak. Great. So, put this guy on. And we'll sort of compare them. So, they look whew, actually pretty dang different, but my connectors look the same. And I think that'll be alright. Let me look at this other one. Let's see if it looks more similar. Yeah, this one I had hooked up to the rear, and I think I had them reversed. So this is the uh, the front pump that is hooked onto the rear uh, uh, cable. Way to go, me. Um, but in any case, I'm going to hook up the wiring connector. I'm going to hit the switch, and hopefully I'm going to hear this thing go and make, uh, make some unhappy noises since it doesn't have any fluid going to it. Um, so we'll do it for just a second, see if it works, and go from there. Um, but while I'm here, yeah, I'll update that. Cool. All right, so here I've got my new pumps. So I've got one for the rear and one for the front. Um, you can see they've got different attachments on them. So one's got the two like upright prongs here for the uh, for the electrical, and this one's got uh, one horizontal, one upright. So um, these are going to plug into the different harnesses. This is my front one. This is my old front one. And actually looking at them, these harnesses look a bit different 
and that's going to be a challenge for us. So let me flip it. Now they look right. Hey, there you go. So this is a little backward. So you can see this is where my fluid came out of the old one. This is where the fluid's going to come out. So they're a little different, but I, you know I should be able to flex the connection over where I need to and flex the hose over where I need to. Um, and so I think we're going to be able to make this work. But first thing I'm going to try and do is plug it into the electrical harness that uh, the old one was plugged into. And then I'm going to run the pump just for a second to see if I hear it click and, and go off. So looking at how that fit. Let me move this down so you can see what I'm doing here. So um, I'm looking at I've got my sideways one here, and then I've got my sideways opening here. And just kind of getting that lined up. I'll push it in until it clicks. Oh, it doesn't want to go. Are they too far apart? Is it bent? No. Let's look at this guy again for comparison. Looks really close. So I think it's just fighting me a little bit being a new part and an old connector. So we'll apply just a little more elbow grease. There we go. All right. Cool, we got a new pump installed, or new new pump plugged in, I'll say, not installed. Um, now I'm going to flick that key, and I'm going to listen really closely to see if I hear any, uh, any motor noise. So, let's give it a shot. Okay, the ignition's on. I'm going to be really quiet, and let's see if I hear it. Ooh, I don't know if the mic picked that up, but I definitely heard it. It spun. And that's promising. So now we know what that problem was. So now I'm going to go through and replace or you know, plug in the rear one. Um, so this is my rear wiper with the green connector. This is my old rear wiper motor with the same green connector. This one looks much more similar in all the other ways. So uh, a little bigger variance in, uh, in how the front ones were manufactured than the rear ones. But in any case... Um, let's see, which way do we need the hook to go? Probably this way. And there we are. Okay, so now i got to remember which hose went to which. And I believe this one looks more like the one that was... Yeah. Well, this one here looks like the one that was my... Uh, front one because my rear one I just remember looked a little more like a blue tube than a uh, black tube so now where's my here's the blue tube hook that on um, I'm not going through and uh, showing you how I diagnosed that both of these pumps were failing um, but it's the exact same process as I put my multimeter on the connection, pressed the button, saw that I got voltage. Um, the next thing I need to look at here, though, is these have little rubber grommets on them. My old pumps didn't, and that's because they're still sitting inside this, uh, <laughs> inside my, my water reservoir or washer fluid reservoir. So let's, uh, let's get those out. Hopefully, I can just do it with my fingers. Well, there you go. That that tells you that. Perfect. So now, we've got everything plugged in. I just need to get those sort of sunken in there. And then I'm going to move the camera around because I'm going to have to finagle a lot to try and get this thing to sit back down where it goes. So, take... Get it around the radiator. There we 
go. You can see it'll sort of bolt in here. Um, the bolt from that side, it'll bolt over here. There's a hole there that uh, battery handle is sort of covering. There we go. Um, and, uh, and then i got to plug those pumps down in there underneath. I don't think you'll be able to see my hands in there at all. I don't know if I'll be able to see my hands in there. Um, but now that I've got it sort of sitting in place, I'll get those in before I bolt it up. All right. Did you make it? You survive? Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I'm trying something here. I think it might be easier to install this uh, this pump onto the housing or onto the reservoir before I plug it in. It might be easier to just get those plugs connected than it is to do on this other stuff. Um, so, we're gonna give that a shot. All right. So this one, I want to go there, and it should just sort of squeeze in. Sure enough, that was much easier. Okay, so um, now I'll separate that over here. And I'll get the other one installed as well. Now these wiring harnesses will be a little tougher to make reach, so I think I'm going to leave those disconnected while I finagle it into place. Okay. Um, I'm going to grab my 10 millimeter socket, remove this panel, get that Put back in. All right, I moved forward a little bit on the project. This panel here uh, needs to come off um, for this specific vehicle. It, truthfully, um, you probably don't need to um, remove all of the. Uh, you don't need to remove the whole um, canister in most cars or the whole whole uh, washer fluid reservoir. Um, I did in this car mainly because I wanted to see if it had any leaks. I just kind of wanted to inspect it since I didn't know the vehicle uh, all that well. Um, but it does make this project a little harder than it would be otherwise. So um, don't think that you always have to do that, but I did in this case. So I'm just getting this reinstalled. And due to tight packaging, it's a real hassle. So let's get... This as tight as I can by hand here to start. That way, when I put my wrench on it, I just have to get like a quarter turn or so, and uh, it'll be set. Great. All right. Um, you can see my screw from the uh, inside right there. We've got our other screw on the back side of this battery area all in. So now we need to hook up the pumps. So we can see our pumps down there, but my connections, you can see, are loose. So I'm going to reach my, my big fat hands in there and uh, get those hooked up. And then we'll put some fluid in it and we'll be ready to go. So, uh, 
I apologize you can't see this, but I can't really either. I'm uh, just kind of trying to go by feel here. I know I've got the right connector on the right housing. And there it's in. Okay. Great. All right. So now I'm going to clean up a couple of things. We'll put some fluid in here. And hopefully we'll be washing our windows. All right, so the uh, I put just like a quarter of the capacity of this thing in there, so you can see we've got some, um, mainly because I just don't want to lose all of that fluid. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna have to drain all this out, and don't want to uh, don't want to just waste fluid that I, I uh, could use otherwise. Um, I'll put these bushings in my junk of extra parts here, and. Let's see. So, key on. Looking at our windshield. Oh, they're just going to spray low. Oh, well, it's fine. Oh, look at that. Like so much magic. That is fantastic. Okay, now we're going to check our rear one. So, um, the rear one. It's a uh, laughably small guy, but let's see if it works. Look at that. We got it. It's great. All right. So we got the uh, front and rears done. Now we've got our uh, windshield or uh, our headlight washer. I keep wanting to call it the windshield washer. We already did that. Uh, so we got our headlight washer one. Uh, I've learned a couple things. I think the first is that uh, installing the pump into the reservoir before I put the whole thing in there is easiest. And then... Um, and then just hooking up the uh, the hose and uh, and wire connection after it's in here. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna put the uh, new pump in there, and then we'll go from there. All right. Uh, before I install this, I'll look at my old pump, make sure that it looks the same-ish. Um, let's get this disconnected. It's never as easy as it leaves you to believe, is it? All right. Great. So now, let's see. Well, stuff's in very different places here. Um, but the wiring connection looks the same, so we should be good. So I'm going to take this one out of there. Uh, this one's got bushing still in it, so we'll take that out. And. We'll just get this sort of shoved in there. Hmm. Well, we've got a little bit of an issue here. See, this pump is just a little taller than how far this one goes up, doesn't it? No, that's about the same. So, the old one worked. Old one, well, no, the old one didn't work. That's why I'm replacing it, but it fit in there. I'll say that. So, I also have a ton of space underneath. Maybe I don't need to worry about it going up in there. Just make sure that this guy's good and sealed. There we go. I think. Let's make sure. Yeah, that'll work. It can just dangle. Um, this is, after all, for the uh, windshield, uh, or the, the windshield. This is for the headlight washers, which uh, are really a novelty, so I don't know why I'm bothering to fix this. But anyway, um, I've got my wiring connection. Where'd my hose go? Here it is. So, um, just want to make sure I've got both of those accessible to me. Over here, good, good. And so I've got three bolts to hold this in. No, just just two. All right, one here, one here. Easy peasy. So we'll go get a ratchet to take that off because apparently I put it on tight.
where it needs to be is that right or did this one go inside there yeah that one went like so sort of really held it in place and then this one goes there is a third one that's what I thought there's a third one on the bottom here so in place get okay, this needs to go back behind there like so okay all right sorry you guys can't see that I can barely see it too uh, but I need to reach back behind here and Find the appropriate plastic hole and line it up with the appropriate metal hole. It is. That's. Man, that was tough, but I tell you what, it is satisfying when you finally get it. Alright, now before I get that one too tightened down, I'm going to also get this one started. Just that way I don't paint myself into a corner so there uh, is also an example of you know kind of eating the frog do the hardest one first because these easy ones will always be easy um, and doing them first will only make the hard one harder so um, you dumb guy bend this whole thing Wow, I'm just now noticing as I took these off, they've got lock washers on them. You know, Nissan was real serious about making sure your headlight washer fluid reservoir did not fall off. You've got three big brackets on it. Pump might fail every, uh, you know, few thousand miles, but it sure isn't falling off. All right. Great. All right, so now I took up this hose over there and this wiring harness over there, which of course is a little more difficult to do than it should be. What's holding this thing back? This harness here is a little tied up, so I'm going to clip this holder for it and that'll be fine all right we back and clip freedom all right Look at that okay now then kind of routing options we have now now that i'm not stuck to that guy Run this underneath all this by myself another inch or so? I think so. Okay, now which way do I need it to go? I think I need it to go this way. So, this around underneath and clip it in. Okay. There it is. Great. Okay. Now, in the process of all that, I lost the hose. Here's the hose. And this guy needs to go around like so. 
so. Perfect. Perfect. Great. All right, I'm going to put a little fluid in here, and we're going to see if our headlight washers work. So. All right, everything's plugged in. We didn't immediately start losing all of our fluid out of the bottom, so that's always a good sign. Now, let's go give it a shot. Well, hell, I don't see any fluid over here, do I? Might have to rely on camera to tell me if that worked or not. Um, let's see what kind of angle I can get here. Huh. Well, sounds like we have a problem for another day. Oh, well.